In the previous session, we started talking about the background picture or the background image. And I had talked about where you have a, uh, you have to have a directory that is in your any preferences so that the, uh, the Mandelbulb application knows where to go get the image file in order to load it up. We also talked about how your ambient needs to be dialed pretty far down so that the transparency uh, is working uh, for, uh, you know, for your image. Uh, so I'm going to dial this depth all the way down so that we have the full view of the background picture. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, I have loaded, as you can see here, an 800 by 450 sized image. All right, right here, 800 by 450. That is consistent with the same and the same as the uh, the view of the in the main window of my Mandelbalm. Now, what happens if I was to load a background image that is a higher resolution than, uh, than the main view? Let's find out. Click it off, back on again. Uh, now, here is a 1920 by 1080. All right, and there's my view, and I can prove that by looking at the properties. And there's my properties, 1920 by 1080. Now, what happened is, and this is an 800 by 450. So what happened is that the Mandelbulb 3D software took my 1920 uh, background image and scaled it down to fit within this 800 by 450 main view. That's okay. Uh, and it's actually almost preferable because when you take when you take a, a, a an image of this size with its pixels and rescale it, all right. If you if you're scaling it too far, the in the software basically throws a lot of pixels away because you need to get these pixels squashed down into that size. 1920, 800, you basically need to throw half the pixels away. When you're scaling an image, a digital image down, most of the time you're throwing pixels away. Now, throwing pixels away is better than trying to add pixels. The Mandelbulb 3D software does not add pixels when it if it tries to scale a background picture upward, it simply pulls all of the uh, the pixels apart. You're okay. So here's the rule of thumb: you're better off having a background picture that is a higher resolution than the image, uh, the main Mandelbulb image that you're working in, or that you intend to finalize. Uh, let's try an experiment here. I am going to, I'm going to rescale this, this Mandelbaum image up to 1920 by 1080. All right, we're going to go ahead and let that uh, render out. All right, I'm going to scale this down so that we can see it. Now, well, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Well, we can just, that's good. Now, uh, this viewing scale here, I may have mentioned it in the past, maybe not. But uh, what this will do is it will, it will scale your view uh, up or down, um, larger or smaller, by the factor of the ratio, 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 or 1 to 3. And it allows you to get a larger resolution uh, viewable on the screen. You can also use your uh, your middle mouse button. I'm in a Windows environment, uh, and I can scroll 
I can, I can use the middle mouse wheel and I can scroll uh, to adjust this viewing ratio. All right, or I could do it manually with the up down control. So, anyway, to not get too off track here, so what I'm trying to show here is that a background pick, and let me reload it, not that I have to, but just so I so we can kind of see it. Get now, oh, see my background pick didn't load that time. You see? All right, let's get the depth all the way down. Come back over here. Let's reload it. I'll try recalculating it. Uh, so I, I, th this is just one of the. It's one of the little idiosync idiosyncrasies of the application. Uh, it's not reloading my background pick. Let me get to a uh, let me get to a a one to one viewing. Uh, uh, as, uh, ratio. Try loading the pick again. Oh, that's very interesting. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to reload uh, the pick again, but I'm going to pick a different pick. Now that loads. All right, so if I take the pick away and I try to reload it again, it doesn't reload. That's very interesting. Now, if I reload a different image, that okay. So, what we've discovered here, what I've discovered in front of you, is that once you load a particular background image and then you throw it away, uh, the software will basically refuse to load that same background image again. Uh, okay, so. Uh, two ways to handle this. Uh, once you get your background image in there, uh, leave it there. Uh, don't throw it away, you know, or uh, play the little trick and just load a different image entirely to get it to load up again. Let's just uh, see if we're consistent here with our, our method of dealing with this little, uh, we'll call it a bug. So I've got a I've got my background image. This is my background pick 1920 by 1080. Okay, I'm going to basically unload it. I'm going to try reloading that same image again. It does not load. So I'm going to unload whatever I had there. I'm going to pick a different image that loads. I'm going to unload that and go back and do my 1920 that loads. So, uh, the little trick that you have to play here is that you have to load a different image uh, to get it to kind of clear its brains, and then you go load the image that you really want. Or you simply don't unload it once you have it dialed in. But uh, I got a little distracted by that little bug, uh, because what I wanted to show you is that, uh, now I'm in a 1920 here. 1920 view. Uh, let's get my viewing ratio one to one. And you see here, uh, the detail's not too bad in the background picture. Now, let's do this. Let's unload that background image. Let's go here and let's load up the 800 by 450. Now, you see how uh, unfocused that is? Because I had a 1920, I have a 1920 graphical Mandelbulb 3D image, and I'm trying to load a smaller image as a background, and it's trying to stretch that whole thing, and it stretches it uh, so bad that it just pulls the pixels apart, and you wind up with something like this. It doesn't look very good. So the rule of thumb is that you want to have a background image that is the same size or larger than your image width, your Mandelbulb 3D image width. All right, 
a background picture that is of the same pixel dimensions or larger because the Mandelbulb 3D software is okay with scaling it down, but it's not okay with scaling it up as we can see here. All right, so look, I mean, look at all that, you know, that fuzziness, that doesn't look good at all. There's no way I would want that. All right, but uh, let's uh, unload that, go back to my 1920. That's much, much better. All right, now look. <laughs> All right. Uh, little bug here. This, this thing all of a sudden lost everything. All right. I'm going to see if I can recalculate it to recover it. Okay. Now, where is my fractal? My fractal is gone. All right, so a little weirdness there. I have no idea what it did, but it um, I've lost my fractal. And uh, the background image came in, but now my fractal is gone. So I just undid the, the, uh, the background image. I'm going to see if I can recalculate. My, my original fractal is completely gone. So I would have to say that uh, the Mandelbulb 3D application has... Uh, it's either crashed or it has become unstable. So uh, all I can really do now is I can recover. And if you remember from earlier sessions, I could possibly recover from history or I could recover because I had saved uh, stuff in the clipboard or I revert back to the, um, the previous uh, save that I did either an MP3, uh, M3P or an M3I. Let's just try something real quick here and then we'll end this session. I'm going to open an, uh, an MP3 and I'm going to go to the installation folder. All right, which is right here. I'm going to go to history. I'm going to go to today's date, 926. And I'm going to see if any of these, I'm going to sort by date modified. I'm going to see if any of these will recover. Okay, no. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can open an M3P from history. Now I got to navigate all the way back there like this. Where's my history? History. Uh, let's see. Today's date. I had just punched this one right here. I had sorted by date and time. I'll say 940. 12.40. What time is it? Uh, I might be down in here. 4.10. Hmm. Oh, I might be all the way down here, 4, 453. This might be the one. Let's see if that's my, no, that's not. So um, I'm going to end this session here, and I'm going to go, I'm not even going to try to recover that. It, it, it's okay, because it was just a little uh, tutorial uh, example. Uh, if, if I was working on a real project, I'd probably be, I'd be a little upset right about now. But this is why really, really early in this series, I said back up frequently, save frequently, and, and, and you can't trust the history. It might actually help you, but you can't trust it. You can, and, and um, uh, saving the clipboard is something you just don't do all the time. You got to think about it to do it. You can only really trust you in periodically saving to an M3P uh, or an M3I, which I did not do. I've lost that work. It's okay, because this is just a little tutorial example of the back pick. But we see here that the back picture, poof. And so 
you just have to be careful with the Mandelbulb 3D software. That's just the way it is. Okay. All right, enough gabbing on this one. This session, we went way over time. Uh, so let's end it right now. I'll see you in the next session, and we'll see if we can uh, uh, pick up and, and the pieces where we left off. I'll see you then.